Right, okay, so today we've got a really interesting conversation between um, myself, so I'm Melanie, I'm the Library Director at Bromley House Library, and Helen Lewis, who's one of our members, who has been uh, very involved in a fundraise, well, she led the fundraising campaign for a plaque on the house that Dorothy uh, Whipple did most of her writing in Nottingham, and a niece of Dorothy Whipple, Judy Eldergold, who has uh, some memories of Dorothy herself. So uh, we've come together to just have a little bit of a conversation and reflect on Dorothy's life and any memories. And uh, I'm probably not going to say very much, but just be slightly starstruck during this. But I'll, I'll hand over to, to the two of you to kind of start a conversation going about, about Dorothy and, and Judy, your, your connection with her and how much you knew her. So um, Judy, you are the daughter of Gordon. Yes. And your mother was called Hilda. That's right. And you are you are actually in um, the random commentary on page one, uh, one, one, three, nine, it begins, where you were staying with Dorothy Whipple. Your mother went into labour. Yes. Took you to the nursing home. Yes. And then um, you were born at about 7.30. And um, Dorothy Whipple records that she went to the nursing home and saw Gordon's first child for the first time, a little creature with slightly sandy hair. Um, and later on, she calls uh, the baby a darling. So uh -huh. there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So you were? Well, we were in uh, Bedford. We lived in Bedford at that time, so I suppose that's why we went to Kettering. That was Kettering that I went to, um, because I think in the war all the hospitals were taken over for uh, the army and whatnot, so mother had to go into a, a nursing home. So that's why we ended up there, and uh, we stayed with Dorothy quite a long time after my birth, I gather. Um, so, uh, and we did go to Kettering quite a lot uh, in my early childhood, because I do remember it. Yeah. And you remember Dorothy, you remember your aunt, do you? Very well, oh yes, because um, when Henry died, she came to live in Blackburn, which yes. is where I come from, uh, where the family home was, of course. Um, and she came, I think, in, in I think it was 1958. Yes. And lived yes. just around just the corner from us. So... And Were I, you a teenager? Were you a teenager then? I was a teenager, yes. Yeah. I was sort of mid-teens, I suppose. Yeah. And she died when I was sort of mid-twenties. So she wasn't in Blackburn very long. I, I thought it was longer. But uh, no, and when I look at the dates, it's seven years, that's all, that's all. And of course, by then she was a very successful novelist, wasn't she? Yes, yeah, she had, didn't write, I don't think she wrote any any novels in Blackburn. She, no, I don't think she, so. She actually wrote most of them in Nottingham, I think. Yes, I she think did. I think a couple in Kettering. Yes. Possibly. Yeah, the later ones, yes. Uh, yeah. Someone at a distance and... And uh, they were sisters, I think, was Kettering. But all the others were, were she wrote from, in Nottingham. From Eber's Road in Nottingham. I wonder, you know, if you, if you talk to her much about her writing or if you remember anything about how she was perceived as a writer. No, the answer to that is no. Um, I used to go and have tea with her a lot. I used to walk, because our house was five minutes from hers in Blackburn. So I used to walk around a lot uh, and I would have tea with her and we would sit and discuss all sorts of things. But she didn't, no, she didn't mention her writing at all. Um, it's really interesting that, Judy, because I've been rereading random commentaries. And I, she's I have to tell you that I typed that. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yes, on my, on my own typewriter, and she paid me 20 quid for, for typing it <laughs> all those years ago. That's a great connection. <laughs> she's, very, she's very humble about her achievements. 
in random commentary. She she's constantly surprised at the reviews. Yes. And people want to, she's very critical of her work in a yes. in an endearing way. She's constantly surprised at the yes. other writers that recommend her in review. Yes. And it, even when she's had all the success that she had from the house in Nottingham, and I think you're correct that there were two more from Kettering and Someone at a Distance is my favorite, which was her last yes. one. Yes. Um, she's still, surprised at a success yes she'd had two hollywood films made by then i know and she, wouldn't she be amazed now to think oh, that I, her books were still selling um, so long after her death wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. she would be thrilled i'm sure oh she would and she'd be so pleased that the people at the house yes the house so much and the plaque yes and for someone like me to read about from the notes that you typed, yes. little about the house and, and I've been in it and in the garden um, is really very special. Yeah. Very special. Yeah. The only thing I know about Nottingham is that she used to, I suppose because cities were very uh, unhealthy in those days, and I think because Henry was uh, director of education at Nottingham. Through, I think through the council, they had use of a cottage or a house on the, oh, I've forgotten the name of it, the estate, the rare Baron, Baron's estate near Nottingham. Mm. It's a new estate, yes. Estate. yes. Uh, so they used to go to the house a lot, this ha other house a lot at weekends. I, yeah. I do know that. She um, loved it there, didn't she? In fact, I've been to see that house. Yeah, I'll oh. tell you about that later, but anyway. Um, and the only other thing I, I know that she was very friendly with Jessie Boot. Was she? Boots. Oh, yes. Mm. Because it must have been in the 1920s, I suppose, when Jessie Boot was just starting out. Well, I know Dorothy had a lot of, not a lot of, but um, when, obviously when Jessie Boot floated boots on the stock exchange, Dorothy bought shares. So, you know, she must, she must have uh, um, supported boots. And I know she always went to boots for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout her life, it was always had to be boots. <laughs> She does get frustrated. She mentions um, unexpected visitors. You'll have typed this up. Um, and, and she makes the remark that if she were a man, she'd be able to just write. But here she's got to make biscuits and tea cakes. She's got to be the hostess. Yes. yes. Lots yes. of great people yes. coming that she's not expected. And you can feel the frustration and you understand. Yes. And with a husband so much older and with the position that he had, yes. was doing all this and behind the scenes, yes. as it were, and yes. had a tremendous success. But as I say, remained really humble. Um, I've got a little quote that struck me personally. It's something that I won't be the only woman that feels like this. But she just mentions... Um, it's about her appearance. She sees herself in a mirror and she says, oh, no, it's a photograph that's been taken. Yeah. And she says, here I am going about as if I were all right in the face. And probably I'm not at all. Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> I was thinking I've had that experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, when you think, oh, yeah, I think I look OK. okay and then yeah. you see yourself in a different yes. way. Yes. <laughs> But I thought it was a lovely phrase. Here I am going about as if I were all right in the face. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Oh, yeah. 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 So, um, I think she's had a lovely face in the later photographs particularly. Yeah, I don't know whether you can see this. I've no idea how this Zoom works. Can you see that photograph? Yes. If you lift it a bit higher. Yes. That's the it's, photograph that I like. That's yes. the one I like. That's how I remember her. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Um, and she had a lovely face. She was, yes. a, she was a kind, gentle woman. 
and she had a very sweet face and she was a very sweet person. Well, that's very nice. And I it? think that comes out. Yes. In that, but but quite quite strong underneath. I think. Mm. Yes, yeah, she makes some remarks about Henry that you will have typed up. Yeah, I can't uh, remember. It's a long time ago since I typed that. No, <laughs> anyway, well, yeah. sort of. The, well, nothing more than the friction that married couples have, or some have. But um, you get the sense that she was, she could put her foot down when she wanted to. Yes. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because she was very close. She was close to her mother, wasn't she? She makes several trips back yes. to Blackburn. Oh to yes. The, yes. What she calls her little mother. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't remember the granny. No. She no. was. She died before I was born. Yeah. 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 But um, Grandpa continued. We we lived next door to to Grandpa, Dorothy's father. Yes. So he was he lived next door to us. Mm -hmm. um, but she she didn't come up to see him very often, <laughs> I must say. No. <laughs> well. Not as much as mother. <laughs> no, 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 no. Is she well remembered in Blackburn? Is she sort of noted well, as a through, literary figure? I don't know. I haven't lived in Blackburn for fifty years. So uh forty no, forty years. Um 50 years. I, I, I don't honestly know. Um, I probably not, because Blackburn has changed an awful lot in, in the intervening years. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, Mary, because I gave all the, um, all Dorothy's papers to Blackburn Library, because, you know, I couldn't house them, and I thought there ought to be somewhere mm -hmm. that was accessible to anybody who wanted to write about them and, and several people have well several people have written about them mm -hmm. uh, about her um so they are accessible mm -hmm. um, and what about when she was still alive and you were there was she kind of a, a notable celebrity in blackburn because was there was there a feeling of fame around her no no not at all no, I think that was, it, it says in this, um, if I can find where it says, um, that, that times have changed towards the end of her life and, and, and people were wanting, what was it, passion and action or something in, in books. And Dorothy's books just didn't produce that. So I think... You know, towards the end, there, there wasn't a lot of interest. And, mm -hmm. and literally for the first 10, 50, 20 years, probably longer, after she died, there wasn't a lot of interest. It has happened in the last 20 years. You know the, the one called The Priory? Yes. That, that was based on Newstead. On Newstead, yes, it was. Yes. But yes. I know she loved Newstead. It comes through a yeah. lot. In well, the, they 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 seem to spend a lot of time whenever they had any holiday, anything. They would mm -hmm. go to this house in in Newstead, in the grounds of Newstead, yeah. which is in the middle of nowhere. I did. It's, uh, but you see, we're north of the city centre, so that's where you would go. We're yeah. not very. I'm pointing as though I can show you. We're not very far from the countryside, are we, Melanie? On this north side, right. no. we're we're quite quickly. Yeah. Um, into the countryside, yeah. Yeah, she, she did get a bit lost, Dorothy, I think, in uh, in the sort of uh, 50s and 60s, 60s and 70s, probably, and 80s. Um, yes, it, it, it was... Well, I... I, I, have... know, I think... I think, I think taste changed, didn't they? You're right, you're right. Mm. And I am in the vintage reading group, and... Um, I've read several of the, I've read the authors that have been chosen by Sally Upbrook House. And these are all similar. They're women who um, were very, very popular in the interwar years. Yes. And then things changed very much in the 60s. But I have to say, in the reading I've, I've read, I've enjoyed, but the 
Dorothy Whipple, apart from Ruma Godden, who writes, in my opinion, very well, uh, Dorothy Whipple's writing is far um, superior to these yes. other yes. forgotten yes, successes. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It really she did that very well. Yeah. It did. It stands the test of time. It really does. Yeah. yeah. It has, yes. Yeah. Am I right in thinking that in the towards the end of her writing career, she she moved into children's books as well? She wrote a few children's stories. Yeah, she wrote stories. two. Well, she was a she was an animal lover. She always had had uh, she had dogs in in Kettering, but I think by the time she came to Blackburn, she probably didn't want to walk the dogs, so she had cats. But and she also had two tortoises. She always had tortoises in the garden, um, which I don't think Henry quite. Mm -hmm agreed with because they ate all his lettuces but anyway um she always uh, and she wrote about the the, the little tortoise the to and they were her <laughs> tortoises that she wrote about yeah um, and she's, written, she's written a book as well about um cats kittens yes 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 she had i i, I don't know when those were written i've forgotten but um I think they were late in the, in terms of when they were published, they were published late on. Was it Blackburn? Um, doesn't say. Doesn't say. I keep referring to this. This is Barbara Riding's lecture, but it's very, very, it's very good on dates. How's all the dates? Yeah. Did she test the children's stories out on you? Did she read no. them to you? No, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. <laughs> about it she was very um she was very family orientated but she didn't her her literary life didn't sort of uh feature very strongly at all um yeah. which was strange i suppose wasn't it i, I think she i was, think at that time it it's almost like habit isn't it she was married to a man who was director of education, as we've said before, yeah. she was doing all the domestic things. Um, she wasn't just free to write. And she seems to have carried that lack of celebrity through her yeah. life. Yeah. She? She, did, she did always have, ne she had, um, um, I don't know what you'd call them. I don't want to call her a maid, but I she did. she was called Nelly. Yeah. Nelly. She had Nelly for years and years and years. Nelly was certainly in Nottingham, mm. and then Nelly came to Blackburn. Mm. The most, I shouldn't say this, but she, I never saw Nelly smile ever. <laughs> <laughs> she was grumpy, <laughs> to put it mildly. <laughs> but Dor she and Dorothy were together for a long time. Mm. For, for a long time. So Nelly did do a certain amount, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah, I, 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 what I meant to suggest was her writing was always a part of her life that wasn't in public, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was like a, an aside really to her life. And it sounds as though she carried on with that attitude towards it, that it yes. was yeah. it, um, out of sight, really. Yeah, I and don't know what. I don't know what Henry's attitude was to Dorothy's writing. I'm sh I, I think he was very, very proud of her. I Good. don't think he, um, because he, he was, he was the sort of man who would not belittle her um, because of the writing or because mm. it was about, I it was a lot about women or an appeal to women but he wouldn't do that he was i'm sure he was very very supportive yeah good good to hear uh, i would have i would have thought so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it's so interesting to to get this this picture of her as a person that it really does bring her to life mm. in a way i've not heard before to actually yeah. talk to someone that knew her is I must I must also the two things that I she was she was very supportive of women. Women were very important to her, and I know in her will she left all her money to her nieces, but none to her nephews. Wow. So 
you know, women were important. And, the, uh, and she also, oh, she loved animals, but she also loved France. She, she had been to France, of to course, to, I think she was a year in France. But she loved Napoleon, and she made me very interested in French history. This is what she she um, used to persuade me to read, mm -hmm. um, and Louis the Fourteenth. And I didn't know anything uh, about that. Yes, she 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 was fascinated by French history. Yeah, that I wonder. If she, I wonder if she thought that the nephews would be able to make their own way exactly probably probably yeah. that was her thinking yeah and that the 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 her nieces needed yes the yes yeah. yes yeah but i was the only niece in this country because all the others were in africa i don't right. know if you knew that her brothers I... went to rhodesia what was rhodesia in those days um two brothers went to rhodesia um, and then her sister Mary, who she went to Nottingham to live near, not went to, sorry, Kettering, to live near Mary. Um, <laughs> Mary, after the war, or just after the war, married uh, a German tennis player. He was a quite a well-known tennis player. He was actually a... a uh, prisoner of war and he was giving tennis lessons to Mary's daughter. Mary was a widow at this point. Anyway, Mary and Charles married and they went to to uh, Rhodesia as well. Oh, did they? Um, there was only really Gordon left in, the, my father left in this country because Walter died um, and the other three were in, in um, Rhodesia. So um, and and the, the other nieces were in Rhodesia. So, what was Rhodesia? Yeah. It's been so lovely to talk to mm -hmm. you, Judy, and I can't thank you enough for your your time and your openness to share your memories. And you know, well, I if, hope if... I've given you in, enough uh, information. I I I, uh, I don't really, um, as I say. The dates and the books and things like that are better coming from Barbara Riding. I have just got personal memories, really. Well, you've really brought her to life for us. And, you know, only you could do that. So thank you very much. Mm. Right. right. Thank you.